Well, Ross Perot was a force in American politics. He was one of the few third-party candidates to garner any kind of meaningful support in the modern era. He didn't win an electoral vote, but he got about a fifth of the vote in 1992 and did well enough to run again seriously four years later. So he affected uh, those two presidential campaigns. He spurred the launch of the Reform Party. The Reform Party had a governor in Minnesota in Jesse Ventura um, and had some other successes here and there. And so uh, Perot... Is, is, is more than a footnote in American politics. Right. In some ways, Ross Perot is a, a precursor to Donald Trump, not in terms of the tone that each of them had when they communicated, but in the fact that they really built themselves to the public on television. Perot had to do it by buying airtime and doing these long infomercials where he would show uh, lots of charts about uh, his economic plans and his economic views and how they differed from Republicans and Democrats. But it also opened the door for people who were well-known, wealthy, and good on TV to have careers in politics. And uh, the current president, um, while not following Perot's model, um, did follow kind of straight talk kind of behavior uh, that Perot did. Uh, Trump less um, delicate, I think, than Perot. But um, Perot has a legacy that goes beyond his own candidacy. Historically speaking... Republicans think, or many Republicans think, that Ross Perot kept George H.W. Bush from winning a second term. The The research on that really shows that Perot pulled uh, from all kinds of people, Republicans and Democrats, and people who uh, would say moderate on, on a survey when you ask them what their political views were. And, and the evidence is that he actually probably pulled a little bit more from Bill Clinton uh, than from uh, George H.W. Bush. So it's probably not the case that Perot cost Bush a second term. I'm glad you, you weighed in and explained that. I think in, in terms of showing how people who were outside the system could find a way in, Perot provided a path. Now that path for him required being a billionaire, but the path is also one where you can get media attention um, even though you're not a, a main party candidate, but it's not something that third party candidates have really been able to emulate, uh, largely because they can't afford, like Perot could, to buy large swaths of time uh, on network television. And of course, he also ran at a time when network television um, was far more dominant uh, than, than it is today. So when he was on network TV, more eyeballs were watching him. Uh, lots of people today, I think, if he was running and bought time on ABC, um, would ignore it and watch something else. Good points. Well, s some research I've done uh, suggests that Perot did the best amongst libertarian voters. And so the highest probability that someone would cast a vote for Ross Perot was that their political attitudes were libertarian, wanting the government out of their lives on economics and on social issues. And so Perot did the best among them, and yet he still didn't get 50% of the libertarian vote, which speaks to how strong the two-party system is in the United States. Perot got the most votes from the people who were most like him, but it still didn't reach a majority. Perfect. I probably have plenty of what this shot is. I just remember his big ears growing up. <laughs> oh, for sure, yeah. Dana Carey had... Oh yeah, no, no problem at all. Yeah, what's great? Fabulous.